Verse number, uh, oh, where was I? Let's start reading verse number 14. The sons also of them that afflicted thee, so this is about, about the, the Christians, your know, believers being afflicted, shall come bending unto thee. So, though, you know, the people that, that were afflicting you now, their children are going to be basically uh, serving you. And all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet, and they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated, so that no man went through thee, I will make thee an, e an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. Thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles, and shalt suck the breast of kings, and thou shalt know that I the Lord am thy Savior, and thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. For brass I will bring gold, and for iron I will bring silver, and for wood brass, and for stones iron, I will also make thy officers peace, and thine exactors righteousness. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting nor destruction within thy borders, but thou shalt call thy walls salvation in thy gates. Praise. What a glorious place to live. Right? What do we have happening around us now, especially recently? The violence, the destruction, the looting, the thievery, the, you know, the injustice. The killing. Not during this time. Amen. Not even a thought to this, to what we're experiencing right now. Day to day, all the injustices, all the violence, all the bad things that are happening, not going to happen anymore. This is reality, folks. This is why. This is why we ought to keep our eyes focused on the spiritual things, on the new Jerusalem, on the millennial reign, and stay in the fight and don't get beaten down. When you get trampled, get back up again, stay in the fight, don't let it knock you out, because there's a day coming. Our day is coming. It's not here now. Stay in it, though. Stay faithful unto death, and he will give thee a crown of life. Verse number 19, the sun shall be no more thy light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee, but the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy God thy glory. Thy sun shall no more go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself, for the Lord shall be thine everlasting light, and the days of thy mourning shall be ended. In mourning, they're not mourning like the sun rising, mourning of being sad, right? Just, just being sorrowful and in mourning is going to be ended. Thy people also shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever, the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation, and I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. Great place to look forward to. Now, the last point I want to make back regarding Psalm 24, because this is, this is an awesome uh, picture of, of what's to come. And, you know, the Lord is a Lord of glory, but I kind of want to just, just step back just for one. There's a last point I'm going to make, a shorter sermon tonight, regarding the gates, the everlasting gates and the doors being opened unto the Lord. Because while I do believe this is describing something physical, it's also there... Uh, for, for a symbolic reason as well, right? And, and we ought to have our, you know, the doors or the gates of our heart opened unto the Lord so that the Lord can come in and, and dwell with us in our hearts and not have our doors shut to him and have our doors open for everlasting. Um, you know, because gates are designed to guard and to keep those out that would hurt you, right? When you think about the gates of a city, they're, they're designed as a defense. They're designed to, uh, to, to keep people out. The gates to our heart, though, we need, you know, you may want to keep them closed to some people, but we need to keep them wide open unto the Lord. Um, let them come in and be a part of that generation that seeks Him, right? That wants to be with Him, that is desiring to be with the Lord. And we can look 
and, and join together and be in unity for that great day that's going to come. And you know what? I'd rather be, be trying to rack up for myself, you know, just, just more eternal rewards. It's going to be great already. Imagine what more God can do. And the Bible says that I have not seen nor ear heard, you know, the, the, the things that God hath prepared for them that, that love him, for them that seek him, that, we, you know, we're trying to seek him. And it, you can't even imagine how God will reward you. We have little bits and pieces of it in Scripture. But if you think about the, the, the greatness of the Lord's mercy, and just, and just reason with me for just a second, and we're going to close on this. How extensive is the mercy of the Lord? Every individual can think about every single sin that you've ever committed in your life, every wrong that you've done, every bad thought, every time you've, you've you know, been just, had a bad attitude, you weren't right with God, every single time that you've just been dead wrong, to whatever degree that may be, between you and the Lord, and the forgiveness that God has granted you, over all of that, from what we deserve, an eternal torture. But, and he's given that to you as a free gift. Now, that is extreme love, extreme forgiveness, and, and just awesome to think that God can, would even do that for us. Okay? Take that same l feeling of gratitude and just, just immense uh, uh, relief that God has had mercy on us, and how he's given so much, and now think about what he may do for those who not only just accept a free gift. I mean, what a, what a great reward you receive for doing nothing. What, how will God reward you for actually doing something for him? 